<clears throat> okay. So from objects to iframe and other embed embedding technologies. By now you should be really getting the hang of embedding things into your web pages. At this point, we'd like to uh, take somewhat of a sideway step, looking at some elements that allow you to embed a wide variety of content into your web page. The iframe, embed, and object elements. Iframes are for embedding other web pages, and the other two allow you to embed PDFs, SVG, and even Flash, a technology that is on the way out, but which you will still see semi-regularly. So a short history of embedding. A long time, a long time ago on the web, it was popular to use frames to create websites. Small parts of a website stored in individual HTML pages. These were embedded in a master document called a frame set, which allow you to specify the area on the screen that each frame filled rather than sizing the columns and rows, rather like sizing the columns and rows of a table. These were considered the heights of coolness in the mid to late 90s. And there was evidence that having a web page split up into smaller chunks like this was better for download speeds, especially noticeable with network conditions being so slow back then. They did, however, have many problems, which far outweighed any positives as network speeds got a lot faster. So you don't see them being used anymore. A little while later, plugin technologies became very popular, such as Java applets and Flash. These allowed web developers to embed rich content into web pages, such as video animations, which weren't available through HTML alone. Embedding technologies were achieved through elements like objects and the lesser used embed. Also, objects and embed weren't really used. They were very useful at the time. They have since fallen out of fashion due to many problems, including accessibility, security, file size, and more. These days, most mobile devices don't support such plugins anymore. The desktop support is on the way out. Finally, iframe elements appeared along with other ways of embedding content, such as Canvas video. These, this provides a way to embed an entire web document inside well, another one, as if it were an image or such element and is regularly used today. With the history lesson out of the way, let's move on to see how some of these, how to use some of these. So active learning. In this article, we're gonna jump, jump straight into an active learning section to immediately give you a real idea of just what embedding technologies are useful. The online world is very familiar with YouTube, but many people don't know about some of the sharing facilities it has. Let's look at how YouTube allows us to embed video on any web page we like using an iframe. First, go to video YouTube and find a video you like. Below the video, you'll find a share button. Select this to display the sharing options. Select the embed and you'll, give in, you'll be given some iframe code. Copy this. Insert it into the output box below and see what the result is in the output. Okay. Let's go to um, Let's see what Marcus Brown has to say. H1000XM3s pretty recently. That was with minimal. Okay. Uh, share. And then embed. And then select the iframe. Huh. Copy. Insert into the output box. And it just plays. Really? Now what if I were to include this in my save? And then go all the way here. Hmm. 
Really? And it's just... Oh, that's cool. Okay, I, I expected stuff like this to be a lot harder. Go to Google Maps and find a map you like. Click on the hamburger menu. Three horizontal lines on the top left of the UI. Maps. Go to Google Maps. Now, uh, what do we need to do? Um, click on the hamburger menu. Let's do something close by. Square one. Let's do square one right here. Um, click on the hamburger menu on the top left. This is called the hamburger menu? Your places, your timeline, share or embed. Embed. We can move it around. Use control for a scroll. Pause this. And then that embeds it with the location. Wow, that's actually super useful. Iframes in details. So that was easy, yes. Iframe elements are designed to allow you to embed other web documents into the current document. This is great for incorporating third-party content into your website that you may not have direct control over and don't want to have to implement your own version, such as a video from an online video provider, commenting systems like desk, what is this? Okay, I guess commenting systems. Um, maps from online map providers, advertising banners, etc. The live edible examples you've been using through this course are implement. Oh, really? So this, this is an iframe. That's crazy. There are some serious security concerns to consider with iframes, as we'll discuss below, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't use them in your website. It just requires some knowledge and careful thinking. Let's explore the code in a little more detail. Say you want to include the MDN glossary on one of your web pages. You could try something like this. So this, you have the MDN glossary with the 100% height, frame border, allow full screen, sandbox, and then Bob rack for browsers that don't, okay. So what would this show? Okay. 
Let's see what this looks like. Save. And then index. So let's refresh this. Wow, what is this doing? Okay. This example includes basic essentials needed to keep the to keep an iframe. Allow full screen. If the iframe is to be placed in full screen mode using full screen API. somewhat beyond the scope of this article. Uh, if set to one, this tells the browser to draw a border between this frame and other frames, which is default behavior. Zero removes the border. Using this isn't really recommended anymore as the same effect can be achieved by using border none. SRC, this attribute contains a path to posting to URL of the document embedded. This attribute specifies the height and width you want the iframe to be. In the same way as other similar elements like video, you can include fallback content between the opening and closing iframes. Tags that will appear in the browser don't support the iframe. In this case, we have included a link to the page instead. It is unlikely you come across any browser that doesn't support iframes. Wow. This sandboxes attributes which work in slightly more modern browser than the rest of the iframe features. Uh, request heightened security settings. We'll say more about this in the next section. So in order to improve speed, it's a good idea to set the uh, iframes SRC attribute with JavaScript after the main content is done with loading. This makes your page usable sooner and decreases your official page loading time. So I'm guessing the, you load the page and then afterwards the iframe loads. Above, we mentioned security concerns. Let's go into this a little bit more in detail now. We're not expecting you to understand all of this content perfectly the first time, okay? We just want to make you aware of this concern and provide reference to come back as you get more experience and start considering using iframes in your experiments and work. Also, there is no need to be scared and not use iframes. You just need to be careful. Sounds super ominous. Browser makers and web developers have learned the hard way that iframes are common targets. Official term is a hack factor for bad people on the web. To attack if there is, if they're trying to maliciously modify a web page or trick people into doing something they don't want to do, such as reveal sensitive information like username, password. Because of this, spec engineers and browser developers have developed various security mechanisms for making iframes more secure. And there are also best practices to consider. We'll cover some of these below. Clickjacking is one kind of iframe attack where hackers embed an invisible iframe into your document or embed your document into their own malicious website and use it to capture users' interactions. Hmm. A quick example first. Try loading the previous example we showed above into your browser. You can find it live on GitHub. You won't actually see anything displayed on the page. Oh, that's why I didn't see anything. And if you look at the console on your browser developer tools, you'll see a message telling you why. Let's find out why. Console. Fail to load resource. Uh, 
refuse to display. So, oh, I see. So refuse to display developer in a frame because it is said X frame options to deny. Block script execution in URL because a documents frame and allow is not set. Not set, not set, not set, not set. Failure to load. Oh, I see. Okay. True. Yep. Denied by X frame options. Um, this is because the browser, the developer that built MDN, have included a setting on the server that serves the web page to disallow them from being embedded inside iframes. This makes sense. The entire MDN page doesn't really make sense to be embedded in other pages unless you want to do something. Unless you want to do something like embed them on your site and claim them as your own. An attempt to steal data via or attempt to steal data via clickjacking, which are both pretty bad things to do. Plus, if everybody started to do this, all the additional bandwidth which start to cost Mozilla a lot of money. But I wonder who gets the uh, like the click or the view. Is that considered like a view for Mozilla? I'm guessing it is. Only embed when necessary. Sometimes it makes sense to embed third-party content like YouTube videos, maps. But you can save yourself a lot of headaches if you only embed third-party content when it's completely necessary. A good rule of thumb for web security is you can never be too cautious. If you made it, double check it anyways. If somebody else made it, assume it's dangerous until proven anywhere otherwise. Besides security, besides security, you should also be aware of intellectual property issues. Most content is copyrighted offline and online, even content you might not expect. For example, most images on Wikimedia Commons. Never display content on your web page unless you own it or the owners have given you the written. Okay, so just don't steal things. In the content, if the content is licensed, you must obey the licensing terms. For example, the content on MDN is licensed by this place. That means that you must credit us properly when you quote our content or even if you make subtle changes. Use HTTPS. HTTPS is the encrypted version of HTTP. You should serve your website using HTTPS whenever possible. HTTPS reduces the chance that remote content has been tampered with in transit. HTTPS prevents embedding content from accessing content in your parent document and vice versa. So HTTPS is the encrypted version of HTTP. You should uh, serve your website whenever possible. Reduces the chances that remote content is being transferred in transit, prevents embedded content from accessing content in your parent document. Using HTTPS requires a security certificate, which can be expensive. If you can't get one, you may serve your parent document with HTTP. Hmm. Let's encrypt. Wow, there's a lot of sponsors. can't get one, you may serve your parent document with HTTP. However, because of the second benefit of H, no matter what the cost, you must never embed third party content with HTTP. So if it's HTTP, don't embed it. In the best case scenario, your user's web browser will give them a scary warning. All reputable companies that make content available via embedding via iframes will make it available via HTTPS. Look at the URLs inside the iframe when you're embedded from Google Maps or YouTube, for example. HTTPS, HTTPS, HTTPS. Cool. So 
But this allows full screen. Always use sandbox attribute. You want to give attackers as little possible as you can to do bad things on your website. Therefore, you should never give embedded content only the you should therefore you should give embedded content only the permission needed for doing its job. Of course, this applies to your own content, a container for code where it can be used appropriately or for testing, but can't be used to harm the rest of your code either. It's called a sandbox. Unsandbox content can do, can do way too much, executing JavaScript, submitting forms, pop-up windows. By default, you should impose all available restrictions by using the sandbox attribute with no parameters as shown in our previous example. If absolutely required, you can add permissions back one by one inside the sandbox. Inside the sandbox, blank, attribute. See the sandbox reference entirely for all available options. One important note is that you should never allow you should never add both allow scripts and allow same origin to your sandbox attribute. In that case, the embedded content could bypass some origin security, pos origin security policy that stops sites from executing scripts and use JavaScript to turn off sandboxing, sandboxing altogether. CPS stands for Content Security Policy. It provides a set of HTTP headers. Along with your web page when they are served from a web server. Designed to improve the security of your HTML document. When it comes to securing iframes, you can configure your server to send appropriate X-frame options. This can prevent other websites from embedding your content in their web pages, which would enable clipjacking and host other attacks, which is exactly what MDN Developers has done, as we saw earlier on. The embed object elements serve a different function to iframe. These elements are general purpose embedding tools for embedding multiple types of external content, which include plugin technologies like Java, Flash, PDF, which can be shown in a browser with a PDF plugin. However, you're unlikely to find these elements very much. Applets haven't been used for years. Flash is no longer very popular. Uh, PDFs tend to be better linked than embedded and other contents such as images and videos have much better, easier elements to handle those. These plugin, plugins and these embedding methods are really a legacy technology and we're mainly mentioning them in case you come across them in certain circumstances or enterprise projects. If you find yourself needing to embed plugin content, this is the kind of information you'll need at a minimum.
Okay. So PDFs were a necessary stepping stone between paper and digital, but may they pose many accessibility challenges and can be hard to read on small screens. They too still tend to be popular in some circles, but it's much easier to link to them so they can be downloaded or read on a separate page rather than embedding them into a website. The topic of embedding other content in web pages can quickly become very complex. On this article, we've tried to introduce, introduce it in a simple and familiar way that will immediately seem relevant while still hinting at some of the more advanced features of involved technologies. Start with your unlikely to use embedding for much beyond including third party content like maps or videos on your pages. As you become more experienced, however, you are start find you will start likely start to find more uses for them. There are many other technologies that involve embedding external content besides the ones we discussed here. We saw some in earlier articles such as video, audio, IMG, but there are others to discover such as Canvas for JavaScript generated 2 and 3D graphics and SVG for embedding vector graphics. We'll look at SVGs in the next article. Cool.